finally it rises. Public preference for Lincoln Continental as the symbol for today's luxury motoring. Hey, hey, it's Jason ODB, the Lincoln Addict. We're recapping Barrett Jackson Scottsdale 2023 Lincolns that sold primarily 11 different vehicles. And we started at the lowest price, and now we're up to the 62 Lincoln Continental convertible that sold for 275000 There is one additional car after this that we'll cover. Uh, please, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Turn on the bell notification. That way you are alerted when new videos post. Now, once I get through this project, I'm going to get back on to talking about actual cars. Uh, of course, the two convertibles I own and some of the things I've been working on. But certainly trying to stick with getting through these uh, this small project, if you will. And we'll see if I'll go through all of these in the future. Certainly, I'll probably hit on some of the, the bigger ones. But now we're at lot 1423, 62 Lincoln Continental Convertible. This is a resto mod. Now, I've met the builder, Ali, and he is also the owner of this company that sells these wheels. So, uh, he has been kind of slinging his wheels now the past few years. And of course, he's no stranger to building custom Lincolns that he takes to auction and potent or, you know, normally does really, really well. Uh, I think this one pulled in a good price. A little bit surprising, I think, to some because if you do get into building high end Lincolns, you will quickly realize that the prices can certainly add up quick when you're dealing with building these cars, certainly, right? This one sold for 275000 And really what I want to do is um, jump over to the next slide. Now, when I copy and paste all this, it looks like just one big blob. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time here. What I do like that Ali has done is he provides all the detail. Now, again, my understanding is if you provide the detail, Barrett Jackson will post it on their website. Now, it's not bullet pointed. It's not, you know, easily to digest when you're looking at all of it. But I would rather have something like this versus too little of detail. So if we take a look and we click on the link, which I think I already had open, uh, we see that this car sold with the buyer commission for $275,000. So some of you might be looking at this going, man, that's a lot of money. It certainly is. Now, you have to remember when you're dealing with a car like this, you're sometimes going to be dealing with either a business person. You're going to be dealing with someone that's you know making the money that can go and not blink an eye and buy a car like this. Maybe it's a sports figure, right? It could be basketball, uh, hockey, NFL, soccer, you name it. Uh, you're typically marketing towards a different clientele than someone that's looking to buy a $40,000 convertible, right? Um, let's take a look at why and how this car sold for $275,000 with the buyer's fee. Now, before we look at the photos, which are the fun stuff, I do want to just highlight and go through the, go through, um, the description. It's midnight metallic blue. And it has Italian leather interior, no expense, spared custom restoration. Under the hood is a brand new, right, not a junkyard motor, brand new fuel-injected 6.2 liter LSX 376 B8 crate engine. High dollar engine, right? Um, it is a GM product, so I know that's going to be a turnoff to some people. And that could be why we saw this car maybe not creep up past uh, into that number one spot for the 60s Lincolns for Barrett-Jackson 2023. So we'll talk more about that once we get to the next vehicle in the next video. Um, if we continue here, uh, he gives a little bit of detail about the RPMs and the foot-pounds of torque, which is fantastic. It has a 4L80E transmission, and uh, those trans are typically... Typically, I think guys will use the the four L sixty E's, but they'll go to a four L eighty E if um, you know if the power maybe calls for it and things like that. Certainly, he he stepped up here. Uh, it talks about the Holly Ultra Low Ram EFI intake manifold um, that has less than five hundred miles on it. Uh, there's a lot of information in here. It has a flaming river rack and pinion, which will be something that we'll hit upon. Um, 
or excuse me, the original gearbox and steering was replaced with a modern Flaming River rack and pinion. So we'll talk about that. The next car that we're going to review is going to have some things that might be mind blowing to you. Uh, so my apologies, I was kind of getting it mixed up there. Uh, it has a Murray custom uh, Murray custom rods, control arms in the front, and their four link kit in the back. Now, here's something a little bit surprising. However, instead of using bags, so it's not an airbagged car, it actually has QA one double adjustable coilover. So, um, you know, a lot of times people see these cars are like, oh, low riders, they're airbagged. This one is not bagged. It does have a hydro boost brake system, um, which are, are often what a lot of guys are running these days. It has upgraded brakes, you can see. Uh, it has a Dynomax mufflers. Gas tank's been replaced with a custom-built stainless steel, which you'll often see in custom uh, situations. It has the 20-inch isotope wheels. Uh, it talks about the white walls. It has decoded digital black gauges, vintage air, magnum, for climate control system so obviously it does have ac it's got a high-end stereo system with focal components jl audio uh, retro sound bluetooth radio uh, tinted front windshield it mentions uh, kind of gets down to a little bit more detail the door lock actuators have been added and lock unlock with uh, keyless entry basically it does have a stay fast canvas so that's a that's a certain type of material that you'll sometimes hear i'll mention that but it does have a stay fast uh, top. Now, um, I've met Ali before, and I know that he really puts a lot of time and effort into these builds. I've seen some. I recall, I always go back to this in my mind. I, I recall an auction a few years ago where cars were creeping over the 100,000, you know, 110, 120, 130K, and we're like, wow, you know, they're starting to really get up there. And then you see something like this almost hitting 300K with the buyer commission. It really shows kind of how far things have went. So again, looking at this car, it's not airbagged. It's not necessarily going to go any lower than this unless you adjust the coilovers, but that's that front three-quarter shot, a blue paint. Uh, he's done black cars before. This one may appeal to you. I'm a blue kind of guy. I love blue, uh, so certainly I would drive this car, but I, I realize that uh, isn't going to appeal to everyone. Here's a rear three-quarter shot, kind of a cool industrial-type setting where the photos were taken, and you could see the gas tank here. Um, that's one thing about some of the aluminum gas tanks. You're often going to see them hang down just a little bit beneath the bumper. Certainly not a deal breaker, but I like to point that out from a visual aspect. If you were looking at this car from 20, 30 feet away, the one thing that's going to maybe stand out to you is the wheels have been changed. But um, you know, obviously the seats and things like that, you can see a little bit if you've, if you're accustomed to these cars, but oftentimes people want a car that, you know, from across the parking lot looks like a stock Lincoln, but of course it has a lot of stuff hood, hidden under the hood, more high performance and things like that. And that's kind of the market that, you know, he reaches often in my opinion with the builds that he's, he's going after. It kind of has that stock uh, look on the outside for the most part. And then you start to move in and go, wow, okay, you know, high-end engine setup, right? So we talked a little bit about uh, real nice brake setup on here. Again, anytime you're looking to kind of go real high level with things like this, you're getting into, um, you know, s some high-dollar uh, items. You can see where some of the AC components come through here on that side apron, which is a nice little touch. Uh, these bulkhead fittings and, and whatnot. So those are all going to kind of swoop over here to the air conditioning compressor. And again, someone that makes the money, um, you know, millions of dollars in maybe sports or with their business, they can afford to splurge on something like this. They just want to turn the key or push the button, so to speak, get in, turn the AC on, put the top down and cruise. Um, you can see the engine bay too. All of the aprons have been painted. So like all of this, obviously when the engine was out, they did all of that. It has a blue top. Uh, I'm a big fan of Optima batteries. Not everyone is. Um, I always have success with the red tops, but I could see why someone would maybe put a blue top in here. Blues are typically for like a marine application, um, but I do know that they can kind of go really low and they can always be brought back for the most part. So uh, he might find you know good success with that. Um, I've always, I think I've ran yellow tops in the past and red, uh, but primarily red. So I wanted to mention that. Okay. So what you see in the interior here is I believe this is a Colorado custom steering wheel. So shout out to Michael and team, 
uh, one of my favorite brands out there. I believe it is. So forgive me if it's not, but I, I, that's my intuition speaking. Um, what you could see is the door panel. Uh, these little trim pieces, these have all been updated. They match in nicely with, um, the pods, I guess you could call it. Um, these are obviously all custom as well. So you've got the speaker pod and you've got the color matched item here, as well as on the dash, you can see the stitching around the pods and we've got the stainless a pillars up here with all the normal stainless, uh, and Chrome bright work around the convertible top. Uh, we can also see that it has both of the caps here, which you would imagine in a high dollar, almost $300,000 car. And, we can also see, you know, carpet's been done and whatnot. It also has the factory look on the rear seat. And then the front is, um, my, my intuition's telling me, and I don't know if it mentioned it, this, I, I don't think this is the, the factory seats. Um, the reason why I say that is the patterns look the same. I know the console is not, um, but what's cool about this, um, depending on how they did it, you basically end up with the bucket seats. Now they could be the buckets from the Lincolns, which are very rare, um, as I mentioned in the past, but certainly regardless of if they are or not, they look great. And I love the pattern that he went with. Um, this pattern is, is, is reminiscent of a Lincoln pattern that was offered. So having the front and back was cool. And also from a safety perspective, especially with that amount of horsepower, um, to have seat belts is, is imperative. So it's kind of cool. Um, you know, maybe not the normal look that you would want in an old school car, uh, but it does have the shoulder belts in it. But certainly to me, safety, as I've always said, is key. A lot of times, even in my Lincolns, you know, it's hard to adjust those belts, right? There's the, the lap belts. Uh, my 64, I can't even get the one little thing to move. So there's always that risk of driving around. And if you don't have a seatbelt on, that's not a good thing. So um, certainly, you know, this, whether it's a modern seat with the old school car, these actually look better than most examples that I've seen. So, you know, tip of the cap to, to the guys that did the interior on this. Um, and, and just kind of the overall execution, I think is a good word to use. Uh, here's a good kind of money shot. So you're standing back, you've got the full car, you can see the wheels. They've got that look that Ollie is kind of, um, nailed down with his wheels that he's selling. The top looks great. It kind of gives you that custom look of a car. You could take this to a car show and easily, uh, you know, I'm sure win best to show. You could easily pull in some awards if that's what you're looking to do. Throw the family in the car, know that you're safe, know that you're not going to break down, right? Because it's all modern stuff. Again, understand that I'm saying that I don't have modern engines in my Lincolns. I like the old school stuff. But being a fan, being a car guy, I like all this stuff, right? So although I may not be able to shell out 275 grand for this car, I certainly appreciate it. And uh, it's not mine. So, you know, I can kind of just enjoy it talking through, um, you know, some of the narration here. Here is the passenger uh, photo of the engine setup. And again, the cool thing about having an older car with a modern engine is you have a lot of room typically. Uh, the newer vehicles, my friend builds newer um, trucks with full custom chassis. He's working on a brand new Escalade right now. And it's crazy the amount of technology that goes into the brake systems and things like that. Um, you try to change the spark plug or a coil pack or something like that on a newer car. It's not that easy. Whereas here you can uh, pull the, the hood open, uh, forward hinging, and you could easily kind of get to what you need to get to, so to speak. So, um, that's one convenient thing. Now, um, the AC system, when you have a sixties Lincoln and it doesn't have AC, or in this case, it has the aftermarket air conditioning, you end up with all of this kind of space back here. And typically it can kind of look a little weird. You're like, why is the engine so far forward? But in here, the way the color is and the way the paint is and the way the engine base set up, I don't really get that feel. You kind of feel like there's a little bit of space here, but it doesn't look, um, you know, too, too strange, so to speak. Uh, but again, you can see the engine bay looks nice. This is the Detroit Deviant. Uh, so you can go to his website, shout out to James. He's been on the podcast. He was actually our first guest. He's out in the greater Orlando area. So he sells these, what they call braces. Um, so those look good in there as well. Uh, this photo looks like the car had, I don't know. It's hard to tell if it's, if it's got some stuff 
on it. Um, I need to get a car cover for my car. I know when it sits inside, sometimes, um, you know, you get all the little dust particles and all that. So that's probably what all this is, just so you guys know. Uh, you can see this is all modified up here up front. Um, as you know, you would imagine with them doing kind of the, the newer style radiator and fan and all that stuff. So uh, that's all been modified. Here's a good photo um, showing again the engine, not showing us much more than we haven't already seen. It does look like the, the negative terminal is removed here. So again, with older cars, you typically are going to have a draw on some of these things. Um, of course, if you spend the time, you can get rid of all that and not have a draw, but it's just easiest. Most of us just you know disconnect the battery. That's typically what's going on. But when you have this modern setup, the one good thing about it um, one of the many things is, you know, typically if you run into a challenge, like let's say an alternator, you can easily get all this stuff. If you need a water pump, you can get a water pump. The steering, uh, power steering setup is different. So it's, again, you don't have to have an expert in, you know, Clearwater, Florida or somewhere to work on this. You know, a lot of mechanic shops could easily get to, um, you know, fixing an issue if you had something come up. But certainly having a brand new engine, I mean, someone could drive this thing, plenty of miles and never have an issue here's another um, photo again real nice engine based setup a little bit of dust and particles and things like that is what it looks like but certainly when you got this home you'd be probably detailing it to the max or just turning the key and uh, getting ready to cruise now i mentioned ollie's name prior because he did buy my understanding was the 65 lehman peterson roadster limo the white one that we saw earlier in this series, if you will. And uh, I'd imagine he's going to bag that or customize it and kind of make that a, a rolling uh, fun car to cruise. Uh, we can see here the factory radio. Uh, again, as I mentioned prior, I'd like to kind of see that. We can see it's an upgraded, I think it was a Flaming River um, setup. Uh, I've ran a very similar, uh, actually ran the same thing, Flaming River in a custom truck I built. Super simple. You got the tilt wheel. Again, you could imagine if this is appealing towards like a basketball player that's six five or seven foot. You know, often these Lincolns don't have tilt columns as we've talked about. So being able to, you know, have a custom resto mod type feel and build that it's going to help appeal to someone that's really, really tall that wants to be able to put maybe the seat back, uh, maybe have bucket seats and not a bench. You know, all of this stuff is, is kind of tailored to um, your clientele, so to speak. We could see, as I mentioned in the past, anytime you're going to swap, um, you know, do a motor swap or whether it's a flyby cable or flyby wire, which is kind of the term I think used when you push your foot on this throttle, um, it's either going to be a wire sending a signal, which sounds crazy, but that's how all the new cars are. You're probably driving a car that's flyby wire or flyby cable. When you're pushing the pedal, there's the old school cable that's pulling it. So um, you know, most of these newer setups are going to be fly by wire and there's going to be a sensor in here that's telling the system how hard you're pushing the pedal uh, and, and what to apply in terms of throttle. But that's why you'll often see these resto mods where the, the, the throttle uh, pedal doesn't match the others. Not a deal breaker at all. I just like to explain kind of what I'm looking at there. Uh, you can see they've done a nice job with all of the trim pieces here. These all match up nicely. Again, maybe not going to be for everyone but certainly look nice. You got the coded digital gauges. So the black, there's two options, black or red. Um, by the way, you can buy those at Devious Customs, uh, my buddy Jeff, and give him a shout if you need parts, deviouscustoms.com. Um, you can see here uh, all of these, uh, or the, the two speaker, not speaker pods, but what I call the pods. You kind of have this one and this one. You often see when these cars are customized, you'll have the stitching around here uh, basically, you've got like a leather type material that's applied, and uh, that's what allows them to easily change the color and give it that custom look. We can see it has the uh, crank windows for these vent windows. Again, that is typical in some of the earlier years. And um, yeah, it looks like a nice cockpit, so to speak. Uh, he did leave, it looks like all of the factory. Um, switches and whatnot here. It's hard to tell if this one, I don't think that one's, maybe it's missing a little piece there, the little trim piece. But again, that's very, very minute. Uh, you can see with black carpet, it is, it is also tough to sometimes keep all of this. You know, you'd have to get in here with a vacuum. Uh, being around custom cars a long time, my wife had a black car for a while. 
definitely not easy to maintain, especially black interior, but um, uh, certainly presenting very, very well what we're seeing. Uh, you think about customizing and how far car audio has come. You know, you've got these nice speaker pods back here. And um, certainly this thing cruising down, um, whether it's a hot rod cruise or just cruising down the strip, this thing's going to, I'm sure, sound awesome with the car audio that it has in it. You can see the window switches over here. Hard to tell. I'm guessing that he just gets them all rebuilt by one of the usual suspects, um, or he could possibly go with a modern switch. Now, although the radio does look factory, it has been upgraded. There's a couple of different companies out there. I think he mentioned Retro Auto Sound, which I think does sell one that looks just like this. It's probably what he did. You can also take yours and upgrade it and send it out and pay several hundred dollars, and you can have new guts, if you will, put into it. Um, something to keep in mind, though, is often, like I've said, uh, if you're not looking to go that far, you can always just take and get a Bluetooth little receiver that plugs directly into an amp, and then your phone connects to that. But certainly here, uh, he's taken the time and effort to upgrade the radio, I think, with the retro sound style setup. Some of the same stuff that we've seen, the bucket seats and whatnot. There's your front three quarter looking down. Again, you can kind of see what sticks out to me is you do see the lap or the um, the seat belts. Uh, but uh, again, safety first, and we're probably getting back towards the beginning, possibly. I think I think one good thing, another good thing is he did provide a lot of photos. I do believe in these years, all of the years, they do have the, tr the long trim piece here. You will sometimes see these guys that customize the cars for whatever reason. Either they don't put them back on or they don't want to. They just like the look and feel of it. I kind of like that long trim piece here. Uh, it just kind of breaks up the rocker area. Uh, but certainly on this one, it wouldn't be a deal breaker. Um, I think it looks good the way it is. The seats you could see here from the back, you can easily tell that they do not appear to be Lincoln seats. Certainly if they are, they've been highly customized. But uh, just pointing out what I'm seeing, I think they look good in the car. Um, I've also said in the past, um, you can see this one does have the little square, which is the keyhole cover. Uh, for 61 and remember also kind of 62 maybe through halfway through the production year um, you would see those uh, we do I didn't mention that he's got the halo headlights these are super popular because you can buy them oftentimes they're plug and play and uh, it will be a huge upgrade from a lighting perspective um, in your car and, and during your drive I think that's it. I think I've went through these these photos a couple of times you can see actually oh actually I'm wrong um, Ali, uh, that's one good thing that, um, that I think he did a great job at is he provided, look how many photos he provided. So it just goes to show you, I think Barrett Jackson will, um, they will put all of these photos up if you, if you supply them. So you can look and see how clean all of this stuff is. You can see it does have a new rack and pinion set up in the front, which again, a lot of that is going to drive the price because I mean, if you go to your local hot rod shop and start asking them to do all this, if they can even do it, it's going to be a lot of money. So certainly he's taken a lot of uh, time and effort to put into this. You can see here's the factory floor pans over here with that normal kind of texture on it. Um, all of this stuff is going to be custom in here, your cross member uh, for your transmission mount. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these photos. I'm just going to kind of thumb through a few here. You can see the QA1 coilovers. You can see how clean all of this subframe and everything is, kind of the unibody construction, rather. Um, it looks really, really good. You can see how nice all of the wires are ran there. I know some people will sometimes see uh, zip ties, and they're like, oh, that's cheap, and things like that. You know, if these are ground wires and things like that, I love to see the wires ran tightly um, as they are, and, and certainly I use zip ties as well. I'm not a high-end hot rod builder, but certainly that's not uh, any kind of negative thing that I would say at all. But um, again, uh, very, very impressed with the amount of photos. And we have a trunk photo, which is right here. So you can see a very, very nice, clean trunk setup. Uh, oftentimes, you'll see nothing done in the trunks. Certainly, um, everything's been done here. You've got a nice speaker pod. You've got an amp. Nicely done. So whoever got this car, they were obviously in the market for a custom 
resto mod style Lincoln. They certainly got a very nice one. So tip of the cap to Ali and his team and crew and anybody that helps him. Um, I think that uh, this is a very nice car. I do believe that it could have easily went for more money. And I know you're probably scratching your head going, dude, that's that's a lot. Remember, 275 that that includes the buyer commission. So Ali walks away with less than that. But I guarantee if you were to start adding up all of the stuff in this car, you're probably getting north of 200 grand, right? And if you don't do all the work yourself and you have a body shop or you have someone that's doing some of these components and they're charging you the hourly rate to dial this car in and get it as nice as it is, there's not going to be as much profit in this one as you probably think. I easily could have saw this car going for 350, 400, in my opinion. So uh, I know that sounds crazy to some, but I have seen, and we're going to see in the next car that we review, the car went for more money. Yes, it has a Coyote motor, but it doesn't have as much appeal. It has some appeal, don't get me wrong, but I think this car to me appeals more to, 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 to more people other than the color because the other car that we are going to review is a black car with red interior. I get that that people love those colors, but this car certainly has a lot of time and effort into it. So with that being said, I'm going to close it down and pr- certainly appreciate all the support. Leave a comment if you can, if you like what we're doing, even if it's an emoji, just a thumbs up. That helps the algorithm. We're continuing to grow here at Lincoln Addict. Check out LincolnToAddict.com. You can buy shirts and stickers, the few that I have left. Take care, everyone. Peace out.